So good morning again, everyone. Um, this has uh, been a, a very trying past couple of weeks. I may move just a little bit. I know we're on, on video. Um, I was introduced to Mary Lou by Linda um, to come and stand um, in this spot um, today. And I, I share with Linda, I had to apologize, Mary Lou, I had to apologize to her um, for some, some scatteredness because I just laid my father to rest on yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, but I couldn't cancel on her. <laughs> um, and so though I did not know her, I knew the mission and the purpose for being here today. Um, and that just leads me right into um, what I have prepared for us. Strength is what we need for our next. Um, in order for us to be physically fit and physically sound, we have to be strengthened. Um, um, I am also an ordained elder, so I don't intend to preach to you, but if something comes out, I'm a motivational speaker as well. Y'all just roll with me today, okay? <laughs> um, so strength for your next, next slide, please. Um, I am a firm believer in acronyms. What does it mean for you to have strength? What do you think about when you first hear somebody talk about strength? Physical. Physical strength, yeah. Muscles, what else? Yeah. Mental. Mental, yeah. The ability to do what you think. The ability to do what you think. So strength, we need resilience. Um, it takes effort. It takes motivation. It takes <laughs> education, which is what we're doing here today. Um, it takes optimism and vision and challenges. We can't change if we don't allow ourselves to be challenged. And that's all of us. Whether you are these babies at six years old or the more seasoned person in here at 65 years old, we all still need to have strength. Next slide, please. S is for sacrifice. Sacrifice is defined as destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else. What are you willing to sacrifice in order for you, your business, to be strengthened? Have you sacrificed anything thus far to help you get closer to your personal goals, your professional goals? We are entrepreneurs in this room. There are a lot of um, sharing about this. Contact me for roofing. Contact me for your real estate needs. I'm sure we all had to make some sacrifices along the way to get to this place where we are in our businesses now. Yes? Mm -hmm. And some of us probably even had to make some sacrifices this morning to press our way in the right. What do you still need to sacrifice in order for you to reach your goals? I, I, my, I, I, um, Mary Lou shared about me running and, and, and being healthy and things like that. I do very little of that for my physical body. I do the majority of that for my mind, for the mental benefits, for the fellowship and the connectedness that it brings to me as well. So I want you to think about what do you need to sacrifice in order for you to be strengthened, for you to reach your goals? The T is for trust. We've got to learn to trust ourselves. You've got to learn to trust what's already in you, what you know, what you possess. You've got to learn to trust others. Everybody is not out to steal our ideas. Everybody is not out to undermine us. Everybody is not out to take something away from us. But there are those that are placed in our lives we connected with, you've connected with in talk shop to help build you up professionally, to help build you up personally. So we've got to trust ourselves. We have to trust others. And then my favorite, we have to trust the process. There's a saying that, that uh, goes, Rome wasn't built overnight. It didn't take us. It wasn't an overnight thing for us to get in a jam, okay? It didn't happen overnight. That we that that we that some business a business proposal just didn't come to fruition. It didn't happen overnight that we got into a good state of being in a healthy place. But there was a process that we had to go through, and we have to know that every bit of that process works together for our good. Okay, so S is for sacrifice, T is for trust. 
Let's see what the R is for. We've got to recommit. What does recommit mean? Recommitting means, and I have some qu a question here, what causes the commitment to shift? Distraction. Distraction. Change the environment. Change of the environment, distractions. What else causes the commitment to shift? Life circumstances. Life circumstances, COVID, pandemics. <laughs> there are different things that we don't even see coming that causes our commitment to shift. Insecurity. Insecurity. Fear. Fear. Those are all great things. And all of these things that you're saying, daily affirmations, we have to speak to ourselves. We have to speak over ourselves. We have to say, I can do this. I am capable of this. I have what it takes already. Right here with what I have. I'm capable. I'm the woman for the job. I'm the man for the job. Even if I don't have it all together right now, I believe in myself. I believe in the equipment, the equipment yeah, that I have, the tools that I have to get you what you need and what I need too. But then I want you to think about the barriers to your commitment along the way. There are some obstacles that come up like this rain today. There's nothing we can do about the rain. There's nothing you can do about your car breaking down. There's nothing you can do about a family emergency. But as you get to those barriers, you have to decide what you're going to do. I think in the very beginning, uh, one of the ladies said, you have a choice. I walked back in and somebody was talking about a choice. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide what you're going to do when you come across the barriers to commitment. So R, I want you to recommit. And then think about this last one. I have no idea why they popped up in this order. That's on me, I'm not sorry. them. No, it ain't on Tim. That's on me. I made this, I made the slide. Um, on a scale from one to ten, how would you rate your level of commitment to health and wellness? Think about that. Take that home. That's your homework. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the E. E, we need energy. We get energy from our food. We get energy from exercise. We get energy from a daily routine. Okay, S sacrifice, T trust, R recommit, E energy. Give yourself permission to say no to anything that makes you unhappy or drains your energy. G gravitate, move towards healthy food choices, move towards positivity. What are you gravitating towards? Because that's what you're going to become is what you're moving towards. Your body hears everything your mind says. Overthinking kills your happiness. And I will share this deck with you if, if for you Thank to you. And you share out. Come back and speak to us. Yes, I will. <laughs> H is for habit. That's the last one. It's a habit. Being healthy and fit isn't a fad or a trend. It's a lifestyle and it's for all of us, okay? So that strength, exercise recommendation from the CDC, we should exercise 30 minutes a day. Please don't be intimidated by the word exercise. Exercise, you walked in here, you exercise, okay? You get groceries, you exercise, you dance, um, you you um. You uh, may go for a walk. You may go to the gym, but exercise 30 minutes a day. And then I want you to invite you to exercise with me from the comfort of your own home. I'm going to be here for a minute, y'all. Um, I lead a 30-minute workout on Instagram every Friday morning at 630, and you don't have to have equipment. You can stay in your home. Nobody can see you but your family members or you looking at yourself in the mirror. But it's just, I started this in the pandemic and it was just a great opportunity for me to still help others reach their health and wellness goals. That's all I have for today. Thank you all so much. I pray that you will be strengthened in your journey. Glad we only had two people.
can't imagine how much faster we'd be able to have to talk if we had three or four <laughs> and still fit it in the timing. So uh, today, um, you know, we're, we're all, God made us all unique, not only physically, but what's inside and how we think of things and how we plan and how we execute things and who we love and who we, what we choose to do. And what I really, and the reason why I put this panel together is because wholeheartedly, I really want everyone mm -hmm. to be the person that their soul is intended to be. And I've been studying um, uh, fearless living, and um, you know, when you when you find something and it works for you, and your life is so greatly improved, you can't help but um, want to share it, you know, with other people. And I have two phones now. The other one's going to ring. Okay. So when I say meant for more, I just meant you all are meant for more. And I pray and I hope that, you know, 2023 is that year that you make progress toward being that person your soul intended. And I'd like to help you on that journey, whether it's anecdotally or professionally. So let's declare 2023 a year of freedom. And that's what, um, you know, I've been studying is fearless living. And people say, what is fear? Like, I'm not afraid of driving somewhere. I'm not afraid of meeting new people people or I'm not afraid of, you know, selling real estate, whatever it is, but fear shows up differently for everyone. And so when you find yourself in a situation where, um, where you can't do some of these things, um, I say, let's be the year that we discover what's holding us back. What's keeping us from following through on the goals that we've set. We know we want to do them, but why don't we make them happen? Let's discover how staying on task and being center is what will support your dreams and how feeling and truly feeling empowered to share yourself with others authentically, not showing up how you think they want you to or only saying what you think they want to hear and also experiencing a feeling of centeredness without doubt. Um, basically, as I said, just feeling like you're living your life as your soul intended. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Next. So first we need to understand, um, we go through a, a discovery of what triggers you. What is it that we do or we avoid doing that um, you know you, you need to do? We discover, you know, the unique ways we respond when we are avoiding. Like, what are the things that we go to? Do we overeat? Do we sleep too much? Do we hide? What is it? What is it that you do when you are triggered? And then we identify better, you know, how, how what we're doing, like, what does it result in? What do we end up doing because we feel that way? And then we further discover on the freedom side of things, you know, what is our essential nature? Where should we be sitting in as our essential? Everybody has their own essential nature. We might describe, might have a word that's the same, but we describe it differently based on ourselves. And if that starts to open up, up possibilities, and then you can be free to choose proactive ways to support that. Um, we talked about choice earlier. That's definitely a choice to do, have those things in your life. And then you begin to experience that wholeness and your essential nature. So these are um, proven. I've seen it over and over again. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in my fellow coaches. I've seen it in individuals that go through different programs throughout Fearless Living. These are the attributes that are part of your daily life when you're living in freedom. So I'm just gonna mention four of them. Um, I think it's on the next slide. Yeah. So um, being centered, we're going to have a retreat in um, January. It's a one day retreat. And we're gonna do this self-discovery. Um, partially as a group and partially individual. 
because the fearless journey is individual to each person. So we'll do some group things, but basically we're going to um, create a unique experience for each person that attends. And we're only accepting 15 people maximum because otherwise we can't you know, give the attention to people that they need to have an individual experience. And the main things, because it's only one day that we're gonna focus on are these four out of the 10. So being centered means living more in your true nature. It means no more looking outside yourself for the answers. And you begin to experience the truth that you already have all the answers, you already know it, it's just uncovering. You know, we have life experiences and I talk about like, when we have those experiences, things that were done to us, things maybe we didn't have control over. And if we begin to wear these life goggles and when you do that, it distorts how you receive information and also how you show up. So you begin to uncover what those things are and really understand the truth is that you have everything you need. You just need to uncover it. You are enough just the way you are. And then you, you know, start to eliminate those conditional responses that you have when you are triggered because you recognize what's happening. The next being satisfaction, you begin to experience like a strong sense of accomplishment. It's just pervasive in your life. You're feeling that way. And you feel like, you know, the tasks that are in front of you that you can do them, that you can accomplish them. And you have the courage to take the next step. You don't fall back on feelings to, to dictate whether you do the next thing. And it builds your self satisfaction so you can do more and more and more. Abundance, and that's another one, but abundance begins to happen when you realize that and you are able to discover um, or do more and more. It begins to build. The next one being inner straight, it's just standing in your truth and living authentically. So, you know, when your friend Sally says something cruel to you or something that offends you, instead of brushing it off one more time, because that's all you're really doing is swallowing that, it's still inside, it's not going anywhere. Um, you have the courage to speak up <clears throat> in a way that's authentic to you without all of the hurt and emotion um, being an attack. You're able to communicate more authentically in a way that gets your truth across and has you feel heard or at least able to speak. We can't control what people receive, but you're doing it in a way that, that is, is healthy in a way that's in freedom rather than a, a, a response, a lashing back. Well, you hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you. You no longer need to do that. And it really will propel you once you, you will get addicted to that. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't like conflict and I just rather, you know, fade away and not, not, but you will get addicted to it. Once you say your thing, once you say what you is, is true for you and you do it in a loving way, it's freeing. It, it begins to open you up. It cracks the shell and, and you just will be like, Telling your truth everywhere. <laughs> um, and, you know, standing up for yourself no longer becomes a dream. It, it really is a reality. And, and the fourth one that, that um, we're going to focus on is synchronicity. And this is a place uh, where you accomplish what's before you without stress. Is that even possible? Like, can we be successful and not be stressful? Hmm. Um, I can tell you it doesn't, you know, it's not easy to achieve that. It's through some work, but it is possible. And it's, it's amazing because you have abundance without the stress. So, you know, pushing through, got to get it done. You know, when you're open and you're free and everything is in synchronicity, you don't have, it's not pushing. There's no effort to it. It begins to happen. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can do this without being totally stressed. And um, life is just sweet. And that's what I want for you all. <laughs> so whether you choose to join us you know, that day or not, or you just reach out to me, or I can hook you up with another coach. Um, 
there's a lot of us out there. This is the information um, for that. Um, and I'm just going to pass this around. If you do want to receive information, because I just don't want to blast, you know, everybody with this if it's not their thing. But if you are interested and you want to put your name on there, um, please do that. But that's, you know, that's uh, we have a coach that's coming from Texas um, who is one step uh, beyond what I've done so far. She's also a certified trainer, um, whereas I'm just a coach, lowly coach. Studying. Um, and then Miranda's um, going to do um, an art. Uh, she's a, a therapeutic art, art coach. And so we're going to do some type of creative. Um, she has something planned for us um, to, to expand what we're learning and, and to you know, have it sink in by doing something creative. And you don't have to be an artist to do it. I know she is, but you don't have to be an artist. And that's really... I hope something connected with you. Do you have questions? I, I would just like to say I've, I've done fearless living with you. Yes. It was amazing. Thank um, you. I, I don't think I learned anything brand new, Uh huh. but it reinforced some things that I should have learned and put into effect in the past. And uh, it's well worth it. Thank you. Day. I appreciate that. And you can see, you know, I'm an active coach because this is my coaching book mm -hmm. with all the tabs and all of that so um all right well i hope you found this any other questions oh, yes you know it's it, i find it very interesting that the title is fearless yes because i find that most all the things you talked about uh one of the major barriers is fear mm -hmm. in one form or another yeah you know of yourself of accomplishment of success of rejection. what people think yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. to me that's always been one uh evil devil that I'm always fighting is you know stop being afraid. Yeah. So fearless is an interesting intro to that. It, even the the title of your book. So yeah. I think it's 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 ubiquitous. You know, it's it's it, everywhere. It I, is. I, I, it is. I mean it, you don't get rid of it. It's not it's not as if you run around, you know, not having fear in your life. It comes up, but but establishing what it is for you allows you to recognize it's happening and make a different choice. And to do proactive behaviors that get you back into freedom. So, you know, every time, you know, I, I, like little things. For example, when when the last of four, uh, the last person who canceled this morning, you know, I'm like okay, I have to add a few things to what I'm talking about because it won't be, you know, enough. There's only two of us. What if I, you know, what if I flop? What if I, you know, you, those thoughts come into your head. Everybody's human. So it's not about fear is bad. It's just about knowing when it's happening and being able to recognize it and how it shows up for you and make different choices. Thank you guys for the time.